Of course, I knew about Arsenal before I arrived. Everybody knows how special this club is. Even though I arrived here as a world champion, I was nobody. I've seen incredible players. If you just put yourself first, then you're wrong. Passionate players. I'll be trying to win it, but I don't see any other way. Invisible players. It was all about playing 100% for my club. I dream of being one of them amongst the best and staying in the hearts of the fans forever. I want to become an Arsenal legend, just like Cherry, Wrighty, Adams and Beckham, too many to mention. And it's Adams to two by balls! Fabulous goal from all right! Would you believe it? Oh, that's sensational! The baby yes. yes! My dad is my biggest inspiration, and he was captain of his club and his country. So it means so much to me to be the captain of this special club. I want to leave a legacy. This is where I belong. This is my family. That's why I, that is why I wish he, he could have gone earlier because I, I didn't want to see him going through it all. I don't think any of us and the people listening will ever see football played to that quality and being that oh. successful. It's no, just it was unbelievable. It was like the Harlem Globetrotters that went out to win. It was that I, I good. And, and let's let, let's you know the the Invincibles. Let, let's not let's not forget that, that that can never be beaten. Obviously, no team can can lose less than zero games in a season, right? Uh, but the, the way that we did that as well, we played negative football. We we played great football every single all them forty nine games. It was great football, and we went it, it, achievement. That no one will ever match. Nobody. No, he said that they, they all they were they lost all fear of losing. That's the yeah. mentality that he got. They won the game, man. Before they got on the pitch, mate. They honestly, the pitch, they I think, you know, a, a, like I said, a corner for our opposition against us was a goal-scoring opportunity for us because uh, eight yeah. seconds later it was in the back of their net. Yeah. It was just just breathtaking. I've, I I grew up through the watching Arsenal through the eighties as we, we all did. And, you know, I watched some pretty dire stuff in, and I yeah. never thought in a million years I would see football yeah. like Thanks that. that. Uh, yeah. It's the best yeah. football I've seen in my life. And I don't think it, it will ever be repeated. I just no. don't. No, no, team, no team has come close to the beauty and, and thrill uh, of that early Wenger team for me. And there's, mm. there's been some brilliant teams, don't get me wrong, but for, for actual thrilling football I don't think it can ever be topped I don't and that's why I loved him for his philosophy uh, just going out and, and mm. forcing us onto the opponent I, I love that philosophy but I know it's wrong and I know you're going to lose games uh, in the long run but I just love that philosophy and I love the football because you, you just don't care about what, who else we're going we're gonna to go there and win anyway that's, that's the mentality I just loved it about him uh, but it uh, you know it just uh, it caught up with him in the end obviously but it's just brilliant. Just brilliant. Yeah, no, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I find it very difficult to um, accept any bad words said about Wenger. And I understand why people have got certain negative feelings towards him, perhaps because certainly towards the end. But to me, I just, I can't accept anything other than the fact that he's, he was just a genius and he deserves to to be respected by everybody because of what he what he brought us. And, I, you know, the football that we watched for those for those for those few years, you know, five or six years, whenever it was, you know, that that great team with Thierry Henry and Patrick Vieira, and that that team for five or six years. That's we like. Yeah, I agree with you. We're never going to see it because now it is too tactical. It is too robotic. It is too on, on a tactics ball. That's how it's played, isn't it? And Man City play like that. Liverpool play like that. And it, and Arsenal, as, as Mike said before, Arsenal are starting to play like that now as well. And although it, it's it's great and we're winning games. Um, it isn't. It isn't so much off the cuff, is it? It isn't that kind of freedom, if you like, of expression that we had under Arsene Wenger. And to me, we're never going to see that again in football because football has changed. It's not going to go back to that now, or it might evolve in years to come, maybe. But I can't see it. I just think that football is going to become more and more tactical and less um, off the cuff and less um, sort of, you know, when you just you, you don't think about it, it just happens. And that's what happened with that team, wasn't it? It just happened. It wasn't planned. And do, do, does anyone really genuinely believe that he wanted his team to be weakened 
season upon season upon season. No, no, no. no. It's That's just, it's just, it wasn't his choice. No. We got, we got weaker as every season progressed. Yeah, and he didn't want that. You know, I'm he sure didn't, he didn't. Know him, he, I'm sure he didn't. No, but, but the, the did, thing is, though, Melvin. One second. No, one second. Sorry. Let me just finish one more point. He, because he was the the master. And the first one, really, to go and find all the little gems in, in France and all that sort of stuff, wouldn't it? No one else was doing that at that point. Everyone else cottoned on to that fact. And everyone else started doing it. So when he he couldn't, it became harder and harder and harder for him to find those new Nicholas and Elkers and, and Colo Torres, etc., etc. Et mm. he, he could it, yeah. he could, it, it dried up, didn't it? We, yeah. we couldn't find any more. Uh, and he we, did find a couple of good ones, with, though. Also, because later. we couldn't compete like with Chelsea, like you said, Melvin. Um, because and and Manchester City, obviously, in the, you know we couldn't compete salary wise. We couldn't go out there and buy that sort of level of player. We would just fell further and further behind. Yeah. But but listen, I'll always have respect for the guy. I think he's the type of gentleman that whatever he went into, he'd be a success because he's very very intelligent, right? So respect is one thing, but I think he's not beyond criticism. I think that even though his hands were tied with transfers and stuff like that, once a player played for us, either from the reserves or we bought him, even for not a lot of money, and that player wasn't good enough, we know that player wasn't good enough, he was very, very loyal to that player, and it cost the team, especially a few defenders I could think of. But respect for him, he was outstanding. And really, at the end of the day, if he did make mistakes, I'll take it all day long. Of course, what he gave me, I'll, I'll never get anywhere else. He's the first person to to admit these mistakes as well. Now he's he, he's happy to say he's made made mistakes, but he, I think everything that he did was genuinely, genuinely out of, of the best of intentions, wasn't it, for the club? And it didn't work out. And I think maybe over time it skewed his his thoughts a little bit. But I, I genuinely believe that everything he did was for the good of Arsenal. He, he gave his whole entire life, and I, I just so much. Of the book makes you really sad for him, really sad because, like, right back mm-hmm. from when he was a child, as you've read already, you know, he was a loner, wasn't he? His parents yeah, he just was, left him yeah. alone, and well, he's speak, always yeah. been a loner. And you know, he's never he, he couldn't have a marriage, he's uh, you know, it, it's just a whole uh, it's quite a whole sad story so far. You know, I mean, I, I'm near the end of the audiobook, like I said, and yeah, it just makes you feel really quite sad for the guy but it, you know you can't feel anything but proud uh, pride of having him at the club for so long and it's just you say, a shame you say you can't go back you say you feel sad for him but he wouldn't have had it any other way no, He's had a great no, no. Life. but you can't help it though you, you just and that, you feel sadder for him than he feels for himself yeah absolutely imagine. absolutely but i think since he's left it's been awful for him, you know, because he's, he's he's kept his same sort of schedule and routine daily. But obviously, since he's left, that was a crushing, crushing blow for him to leave. And since then, he's lost not only his brother, but his sister as well. In the, it, Since he left Arsenal two years ago. It's horrendous. Mm. Really sad for him. He's going through a really bad time, you know. Yeah. I know I know he's got multi-multi-millionaire, but at the end of the day, <laughs> he's a bloke. He's a man. And, you know, who lost his child growing up because he wasn't ever there. He was supposed to go back for a Christmas before he joined Arsenal. He was supposed to go back for a Christmas um, family get together, which he promised for ages to do. In the end, he stopped off, watched um, because of the pressures from the club. He stopped off and watched a a football game and he missed all the Christmas celebrations with his family. Uh, Just because he he had to look for some players. Um, mm. it's just you know he devoted his entire life to Arsenal even before he actually physically joined us you know he was, he was doing things like that so um, and it never yeah. stopped for him never stopped no no he, he, he did and he's I mean uh, when when he was at the Palladium and he was asked about you know the banners and stuff you know Wenger out and all that kind of stuff and you could see how much that had hurt him even though he, he was maybe trying to play it down a little bit, you could just see, couldn't you? And, it, and of course it would, you know, because like you said, he's dedicated his whole life to the club and there's a small section, and it was a very small section of the fan base, were putting stuff like, you know, flying helicopters over the stadiums and, um, you know, having banners in the ground and all this kind of stuff. We know we, we know who they were, but that would have hurt him. And that's that's I thought that was unfair and unnecessary 
Um, and I hope that some of the people that, that did that maybe do feel a little bit bad about it now because there was no need for it. They, they, they might well have wanted him to go. They might not have um, felt he was what the club needed at that time. But to do that was was wrong. And hopefully they might realise that now or, or one day. I'm hoping so because I don't feel he deserved any of that. Um, and that's unfortunately, um, he had to suffer that as well, didn't he? Which was a shame. But, you know, that's, mm. you know, one of those things, isn't it? I guess. But I suppose that's the life of being a football manager. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll um, never see his type again. We'll never see no, his type well, again. We, we definitely a shame, actually, in a way, because he, yeah. you know, he, he brought so much, didn't he? Um, but it's like anything, isn't it? Nothing, nothing goes on forever, and you know that type of football that he played and what he did was never going to be indefinite, was it? It was, always, it was always going to change and come to an end, and it did. Um, and now, you know, the club's moved on and I think we've all got to move on. You know, give Wenger the respect he deserves for what he did um, and never forget what he did. But ultimately, look forward now for the new start and the new regime at the club now. And hopefully, I'm, better things, better times will come than what we've experienced over the last few years. That's all we well, can hope I've for. Got, I've, got, I've got to say, uh, I'm, I feel really excited about Mikel Arteta as well. I never thought I'd get the same sort of feeling, similar feeling to when Wenger sort of first joined and we saw the changes sort of gradually coming in. I don't think we're going to get quite the thrilling football, but I, I'm i really excited about what Arteta can bring to us as well, though, to be perfectly honest. And I hope he stays for many, many years to come as well because I think he's a, he's a great, great coach. Yes, I've been talking play. before. Let's hope he doesn't stay. Let's hope he doesn't stay for one or two years too long, though, or he'll get a mm. ban and throw it in as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now let's 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 look where we are at the moment with our manager, and we're very happy. How can you can't be unhappy with the manager? No, look where no. Man United are. No, they still haven't so really got the manager they want, and you're going back. Well, how long has Berger been gone? Seven years, is it? Mm. Yeah, seven, seven years. years. Yeah. And they're no yeah. nearer really finding the manager they want. So we're in a very no. fortunate position. I, yeah. I wouldn't swap him yeah. for anyone. No, no, I, I agree. I wouldn't. Definitely not. Not not anyone else that's out there at the moment. I'd maybe swap him for perhaps Pete Wenger, maybe. But other than that, I wouldn't swap him for oh, anyone yeah. at the moment. Uh, yeah. But no, or maybe Pete Fergie, perhaps. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, certainly not no one else at the moment that's out there. Um, I did sort of briefly want to mention Mesut Erz. I know we talk about him a lot. It's his birthday today. And I, I know he's watching, so I'm going to say happy birthday, Mesut, because I know you're a big fan of the show. <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do we think that that's it now for him? He's played his last game and that, that'll be him at the end of the season. He'll just toggle off and disappear into the realms of history. Or, or do you think they still might get an opportunity to play again this season? What do you think? Number, I don't think he'll play again this season for us. I don't think he will. And I think he's in such a, I, I think it's become a bit of a a war between the club and himself. I mean, he's done some things that I don't, has shown the club no respect at all. I know that we haven't picked him or the manager hasn't picked him and he's, he's really been disrespectful to the club, which I don't think is correct, really. And I think, i got a funny feeling that when he's a free agent at the end of his contract, he'll come back and purposely play for another premiership club. I really do. He's going to do that. Because I think there's a little bit of nastiness there in the tone. Because you think yeah. about the listen, he's one of the he's one of the most talented players we've ever ever had, but we've had much better players than him playing putting the shirt on. Right, no, no, I'd, I'm not, I'm I'd, I'd rather have Ray Parler than than him because Ray yeah. Parler left everything on the pitch. Yeah, Nowhere, yeah. he didn't have a fraction of Mesut Ozil's skill. No, or no, ability, but he was but so effective for us. I would have him every day because yeah, I mean, I'm not. Don't get, when he was in his full flight and he had his time, he was breathtaking to watch. He was amazing. And we can all watch YouTube clips of him going round and round and round and go, oh, you know, a drool coming out of our mouths. Great. But I'm sorry, but he put it in maybe one time out of ten if he, if he spread it out across his entire Arsenal career. And I just can't wait to, for the day he walks out that club and we never see him again. I just cannot wait because all we do is talk about him. Yeah. And it just drives me mental. And uh, everyone's one. going on about this bonus now. I mean, that bonus was written into his contract years ago. There's nothing we could do about it. I mean, no. for God's sake, what, what is the point in using him now when he's leaving in six months' time? We might as well give his time on the pitch to someone that's going to serve the club long term. I would... I, I would yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, the only the only thing I would say is um, obviously we were very very interested in in that Hassan Awar 
who seems like a similar type of role he was going to play. If if Arteta wants a player like that, we couldn't get OR at this time. He's got a player already at, at the squad, so why isn't he at least picking him on the bench? If he's got a space for a player like that in the team. Yes, OR is a different player, I understand that, but they play a similar role. And it's a role that even Arteta said, Ozil maybe doesn't fit in with the, the system that we're trying to play. But surely, if he was after OR so much as apparently he was, I just can't see why... He's not at least thinking about putting him on the bench, maybe. I don't know. I can't see it happening now. I think he's done. I think Ozil's done at Arsenal. Um, and I'm quite sad about that, if I'm honest, because I think he, he um, he's still got something to offer us, I think. And I thought he played quite well before lockdown, actually. Um, he maybe didn't get the credit he deserved for some of the performances that he gave. But whatever the reasons, I think we all have to accept that he's done. It's a shame it's ended like this. Um, and maybe Melvin's right. Maybe he'll come back and play for someone else and, and rip us to bits and set up six goals against us maybe one day. If he didn't day. do it, the stupid things he's been doing, though, then we wouldn't feel as much resentment towards him. Because I'm, yeah, the only no, I'm, I'm getting I'm, angry I'm, now. Because yeah. I, I like Mr. Ursel as a person. I like him as a player. But he's doing my head in now because what's the point in th- th- that thing called the Gunnosaurus, God, you know, stuff. It's ridiculous. That is just poking the club in the eye and making us look like a laughing stock. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. there's no need to do that. If you wanted to pay Gunnosaurus his salary, do it behind closed doors. You haven't got to come out on Twitter and say, oh, I'll pay it. Obviously, you're, you know, it's like patting then, the club on the head. It's like patting exactly. Arsenal on the head. Oh, go on. And yeah, then he's, t- he's commas, 20p for some sweets. And you know, it's commas, just ridiculous. Yeah, inverted mm. commas, he put, whilst I'm an Arsenal player, he's going to play his wages. You know what I mean? It's like twisting the knife even further. But exactly. going back to his playing, he was brilliant, Ozil, at times, but he did pick his matches. You couldn't rely on him to, to play well or put his foot in in the games that really mattered, away at Chelsea or whatever, or Liverpool, away at Man United. He went missing in so many important games. When we play an home to say a lesser club, not only a lesser club, he didn't play so well, it wouldn't have mattered so much because we'd have still got over the finishing line. But when we nearly, really mattered, we nearly needed him when all 11 of us, had to, all the 11 players had to play well to win that game and give 100%, he didn't show up. And that was disappointing as far as I'm well, concerned. Well, it was like B.A. Baracus. He would never get on a plane to go to away games. You know, or, you know he's worse than, De- than Dennis Bergkamp. You know, not going away. Oh, no, That's the only time I want to hear you mention him and Dennis Burkamp in the same place. Well, exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather have B.A. Bracus in the team. Like I say, I ain't got no goddamn play for. But we couldn't play him away. We couldn't play him in away games. So what's the point? Yeah. It's just yeah. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And just, I can't wait to stop talking about him. Can't yeah, well, I, say, I think it's a shame. But yeah, I think we need to accept that he's done now and... Unfortunately, we're still going to have to pay, uh, or at least some of his wages, without a bonus until the end of the season, by the look of it. But anyway, it's like uh, breaking up with a girlfriend and having to carry on living with that, uh, you know, a few more months because she can't find anywhere to live. Uh, it, that's how it is. It's, it's, it's really awkward. You know, we just want to part ways, but then she won't go anywhere. She won't go back and we live with her mum and dad, so she stays in your, in your flat. Something like that, and you can't. It's just, it's, it's just a horrible situation. We just need to be parted ways, and uh, can't wait for it to be done. Uh, next summer is going to be really exciting because I think we're going to save best part of a million pound a week in salary with all the players yeah, no, yeah, and no, contracts no, coming yeah. to it in. I would, I would say that. I would say that we are. I just wanted to just finish this little bit just by saying happy birthday, Mesa. We love you, really, mate. <laughs> Yeah, like a, <laughs> someone put a comment on saying, did he have 350,000 candles on his back? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. But the sooner, the sooner you leave, it is probably going to be better for everyone. Um, so moving on then, uh, what we'll do is our usual little Premier League pre- score predictions before we go. Um, I think that, I mean, I've got the four games, which I think are the four biggest games, apart from our one, obviously. Um, obviously, starting with the first one on Saturday, the Merseyside derby, Everton, 100% record against Liverpool, of course, bouncing back from their 7-2 defeat. What do we think about that one, Melvin? Everton against Liverpool. Well, I'm going for Everton to win 2-0. I think they're riding high. I think Liverpool, there is a little bit of doubt in their mind. They didn't play particularly well against us, did they, really? But they let us in. We didn't play particularly well ourselves. And we nearly, we could have got a draw out of that, which a couple of years ago, a year ago, we would never have got near. So I, I, think, I think they've got momentum, Everton. I think there's little question marks. Confidence must have taken a dent, getting beaten yeah. by seven goals. So I'm, I'm going for Everton to win 2-0. Well, 
Well, okay. You think they'll keep a clean sheet even despite Pickford being in goal for them? Oh, well, oh that, they need two Pickfords, don't they, really? No, yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that, yeah. No, just, I think they'll be good enough. I think they'll be good enough to win 2-0. There we go. Well, that'd, that'd, be, that'd be interesting if Liverpool lose two on the bounce. What, what do you think, Andrew, that one, Evan Liverpool? I, I can't help thinking that Klopp's been licking his wounds over the last couple of weeks during the interlull and um, they're probably working every, all the players that he's obviously got kept behind that haven't gone away on international duty or be doubly training hard and be more determined than ever and they'll probably come back with a real performance um, but obviously Everton are a different different side this season so I don't think they're going to get spanked but I, I can't see anything other than Liverpool just going all guns blazing for a win I would say something like about 3-1 Liverpool Wow okay I mean Jonathan makes a good point it is usually often a low scoring draw isn't it ever against Liverpool especially at Goodison Park um, I, I do, obviously Everton are in great form aren't they Calvert-Lewin's on fire at the minute yeah. as, as it says there it's uh, Pickford against Adrian the two goalkeepers not in the best of form, and, and Sam, <laughs> I think there's going to be a few goals. I'm not sure about nine four. <laughs> That'd certainly be a good game. But some of the scores we've had this season, it wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Uh, I, I think Everton will win as well. Actually, I, I'm going with Melbourne. I think Everton will win. I do think there'll be quite a lot of goals in it, though. Maybe three two or something like that. Because I, I do think the f- defensively is the weakness of both teams at this moment in time. Everton scoring a lot of goals, um, and I just think Everton will nick it. But I think it will be. Maybe 3 2, something like that, I'm going to go with because I can see there being goals there. Uh, and I say Liverpool two defeats in a row could be interesting this early in the season. If we if we was to beat Man City as well, then that's Man City lost twice, Liverpool's lost twice within the first five games. That would be a bit of a shock, wouldn't it? And open the league right up, really. Um, yeah. I think that happened in 1973 the last time. Was it? <laughs> no, exactly. Well, it might have been. <laughs> right, the second the second game is another interesting game. I think Newcastle against Manchester United. That could be an interesting game. Obviously, Man United not doing too well at the moment. What do you think about that one, Melvin? Well, it all depends if Maguire's playing or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's yeah, playing, then I think I think they're going to get beat. United. I think Newcastle are doing two 0 again. Two 0 Right. Okay. I think a couple of their forwards, Newcastle, are coming coming on strong now. But I think, you know, I think, yeah, I think they're, they're up and, you know, I'm going with momentum in that one as well. Did you say, sorry, Newcastle to win 2-0? Yeah. 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 Well, what, what do you think then, Andrew? Do you, do you agree with that or not? Um, it's at Newcastle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. 1-0. Uh, 1-0. One all. One all. One all. I think that... I don't. I think it'd be a dull game. But what is it with, with Maguire? I mean, seriously, is it, it honestly, he's just why is he getting picked for England? I mean, I mean, Southgate has just got to be sacked. Honestly, I've been going on for ages about Southgate being a rubbish coach. He's worse than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I reckon. Um, but yeah, I, I can't. I mean, neither side are great, are they? So I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with one all. Yeah, I mean. I can see, yeah, I can see where you're coming from, but I actually think Newcastle will beat them, actually. Um, I just think Man United have got some problems um, going on there. Um, obviously, M- Maguire is just, uh, I mean, I don't know if he'll even play, to be honest. I mean, I don't, he, I don't want them to lose. I don't want Man United to lose, though, either, because I don't want Ole Gunnar Solskjaer to get sacked. So well, I yeah, him to stay yeah there. maybe, yeah. I just think New- Newcastle, you know, have actually played reasonably well, haven't they, last few games? I think, you know, I think they can score goals now this season. That was their problem last year, not yes, scoring right. enough goals. Um, they've got obviously Wilson, who's got a few. So Maximum just signed a new contract, so I think he'll be he'll be well up for it. Um, and I think they'll beat Man United. Actually, I can see it being something like three one or even four one, something like that, because I just think Man United have got a lot of problems. Uh, and away from home, I mean, they've had a they've had some bad results at Newcastle in the past, haven't they, in, in recent years. So they beat them 2-0 last year, didn't they, Richard? I think they might have beat him last year. Yeah, they well, well, comment, uh, Jonathan, J- Jonathan's comment about uh, United's next four fixtures. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. They, they could lose oh. all of them, couldn't they? They could do. <laughs> just, I hope not, though, because... I, They'll be bottom just, of the I, league. I, I hope they just, just about 
keep ticking over enough for them not to sack him. I really do because I. Yeah, no, but I'd rather just... they went into complete meltdown actually. Um, and if they lost their next four games, well, they're going to be in the bottom three, aren't they? You'd imagine, and that would be yeah. quite funny. Let's be honest. I know, but I, I don't want them to get. You know, uh, him who will not be named uh, in his manager because he's just waiting around the corner. You know, in his car. Just what eating you, donuts, really waiting think? for the call. But I think it's just a matter of time, isn't it? Ollie's on borrowed time, isn't he? Regardless, they could they could get a couple of good results in the next few weeks, but I don't think it's going to ultimately change the overall long term picture, is it? And I think he's on his last legs. So let's just get him. Let's just get it done. Let's let, let him lose three or four games in a row, bottom of the league, so we can have a little laugh for a few weeks, and then you know they're not going to get relegated, are they? Let's face it. Even if he stays, so we might as well make the most of them. You know, the amount of years we've had to put up with him you know, laughing at us and stuff like that. So we, we need to make the most of this for the next few weeks. So I hope they lose their next four games, um, even if it's only a temporary um, kind of situation for them to be. Don't, don't forget last year, we wasn't far off dropping into the bottom three or four, were we? So, you know, it's their time this year and I'm sure that, that they'll make similar change and they'll they'll improve. But for now, I'm going to enjoy it. So I, I think you oh, can... You, can you imagine if they sacked all they got a soul show and they got in uh, Unai Emery as his replacement? <laughs> right now, the so favourite... The favourite has got to be Potch, isn't it? It's got to be Potch. Yeah, of course. It I, is. Think, I think, think Potch is going, yeah. I think I we just, know that. Where he'll go. Just a bit of fantasy yeah. going on, the daydreaming going on in my head then. Well, yeah, Emery would be Emery so would be funny. funny actually, That'd be hilarious. But, that would be funny. <laughs> but, you know, I'm sure I'm sure they'll, uh, their next manager will be better than uh, than Ollie anyway. But anyway, um, right, the next game then is an interesting one. Tottenham against West Ham, London derby. Um, obviously, uh, West Ham are in good form, aren't they? So, and, and so are Spurs, actually. So, that's going to be a good game, actually. What, what do you think about this one, Melvin? Got a fancy a couple of goals, two all. Yeah. I think both yeah. both teams are very good attacking. They haven't got the greatest defences, either team. And I think, I, I fancy West Ham, I hate to say, go 2-0 up. In fact, I've got a funny feeling they're going to go two up West Ham, cruising, and then give something away the last 20 minutes or something. I think we 2 all. Well, that'd be a good game if it is. I mean, I, yeah, I can understand that. What about yourself, Andrew? What do you think of that one? Spurs against uh, West Ham. I always predict Spurs to lose 6 0, don't you? Spurs nil, <laughs> West Ham 6. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 should, I should put the Spurs game on with you because I know you're going to say that. I mean, I actually think West Ham might well win just because they're in great form at the minute, haven't they? They, they had a great away win at Leicester. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if West Ham do go there and win. I think they've had a, a few decent results at Spurs as well, actually. It's one of their sort of better better ground for them over it's the a bogey team for Spurs. They've they got a very good down. record, that's right. Very good yeah. record against Spurs. So I wouldn't be six surprised nil. if West Ham win. Yeah, I mean, 6 0 would be great. <laughs> I'd be happy if West Ham won 1 0. But I, I think there'll be goals, actually. I, I agree with Melvin. I think both teams have, have scored a lot of goals this season, but they're maybe not the best defensively. You've got to remember what West Ham did when they when they played away at, at our place a few weeks ago. You know, they, they, they made it difficult for us. I think they'll be similar against Spurs, actually. Um, and I don't think Spurs are aren't as good as us to be able to. You know, find a way to win it. So I think West Ham will nick it. Maybe, maybe two one. Uh, again, it could be a three two. I think there could be goals in it, but I'll, I'll go two one. I think to West Ham because it just... depends. Depends whether Moyes is back because you know if he's back, then they'll lose, won't they? So uh, is, oh, yeah, uh, can Gareth Bale huh. play? Is Gareth Bale available? Great minds, Nitesh. Yeah, um, I'm not sure actually. I, I don't know why he's not played before. Is it because was he not fit? I think he was in a some golf tournament. Oh, was he? Oh, well, that's obviously more important. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, so uh, yeah, the DWCT said 3 2 to West Ham. So, yeah, I, I won't be surprised if that's what happens. And the, the other game we'll predict on is another sort of local local derby, actually, in a game that I think could, again, be quite a good game to watch. Leicester against Aston Villa. Of course, Aston Villa and Leicester both had a good start to the season. Uh, are Villa going to kind of follow up that? Liverpool game, you know, it's another tough game for them, but I mean, they must be flying at the minute after that, you know, so what do you think about that one, Mel, with Leicester against Aston Villa? I think they've been reversed of their last two games, I fancy uh, Leicester who got slaughtered by West Ham and Villa who had a fantastic game against Liverpool, I think Leicester will win, I just think that the manager the Leicester manager will get them going I think uh, they'll, they'll really get them going for that game, and I think Villa have been playing very well, but I think at some stage it comes to an end and I fancy Leicester being the team to do it 2-1. 2-1 to Leicester, yeah, OK. That seems, uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's quite a difficult 
one to call is. What do you think, Andrew, about that Leicester Aston Villa? Yeah, they uh, they beat Leicester away last year, didn't they, in the semi final? And uh, that's right, they did. Uh, yeah, they beat. They knocked them out of the cup. Yeah, I think um, Brenda, Brenda Roger, Royal Roger Brenda. I think he'll. Uh, yeah, I'll get. I think I agree with Melvin. I think he'll. Uh, I'll go for a Leicester win, two one. I think, bro. I think they'll just sneak it. Actually, I mean, yeah. Mad- Madison's in real form now, isn't he? Now he's come back. He's he's got a couple of screamers, isn't he? And uh, he's a good player. I've always liked him. So uh, I think he. I think they'll do it. I mean, Leicester have been a bit hit and miss, haven't they? They had that great win at Man City when they won 5-2 and then they got smashed at home to West Ham. And it's you never really know what you're going to get with Leicester at the minute. I mean, Aston Villa had a great start, haven't they? They're, I think it's only them and Aston Villa and Everton have got 100% record. I know they, they played one less game because of the uh, uh, they were supposed to play one of the Manchester clubs at the start, weren't they? But mm. um, I don't know. I, I fancy Aston Villa might, might get something, you know. Maybe a draw. I don't know whether or not they can win. Um, I'm going to go a draw, maybe maybe one one. I think I think I'll go for a draw. A lot of derby games tend to finish in a draw, don't they? Um, they're doing really well. I mean, they, I think yeah. they are, have had the best transfer window, Aston Villa. When you when you look at the, what they needed and what they've got, and uh, they've made some really good signings, actual intelligent, good quality signings, rather than what they mm. did last summer. They went off all around Europe and bought players that no one's ever heard of. But they've actually got some really good quality signings in this year. And I think, yeah. respectively, to compared to all the other teams in what where they expect to be finishing, like Chelsea, for example, went out and bought the players that they've bought. No thought went into it. They bought it because they bought those players opportunistically whilst they could. And just, we'll work it out later type of thing. Uh, we'll get them while we can. But, yeah, I think they've done really, really well. I think Matty Cash at the right back is a really underrated player. I think he's going to be excellent. And um, I think mm. it, Ross Barkley signing is a stroke of genius, to be perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah. Excellent signing for them. And, well, the, the, the striker, Ollie uh, Watkins, uh, he's obviously speaking for himself at the moment, isn't he? He looks like a steal as well. So... Yeah, I'm really impressed with... What it, but their best signing by far is keeping Grealish for another five-year contract. I mean, oh. who would have thought of that? Yeah, but Grealish summer? is not good enough for England, is he, Andrew? Oh, not God, good enough man. to start for England, is he? He started to go on Southgate again. Please, mate, please, Andrew. He's not good enough. No. Southgate plug. I think Aston, 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 Villa got, Aston Villa haven't got a bad goalkeeper either, have they? I don't think. Who is he? I don't yeah, know. Exactly. Well, of course, yeah. I didn't even mention <laughs> him as a sure. signing. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think, I think I've heard they've got a decent goalkeeper for Aston Villa like, this season. They stole him yeah. from somebody. Just to go yeah. back to that game, Andrew, you're saying about Aston Villa, how well they've done in the market. But over the last mm. couple of years, look how well Leicester have done in the market. They've done brilliantly. <sighs> okay. Oh, I think so. Yeah. People have signed. I saw I mean, the centre half. The, the last couple of years have done very well. The centre half, oh, they Of course, they have. But, I mean, the money they brought in as well. I mean, unbelievable. It wasn't, they weren't money. spending 30s and 40s. They were spending 10s and 20s. Oh, I know. And they've got a Absolutely. Rich, their I'm midfield not... is far better than ours. Come on. No, not Free party. <laughs> well, Free party. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see next week, won't we? Because we're playing him, aren't we, next week? So, um be interested. That'll be a good game, actually. I think that um, uh, indeed he's out as well, though, still, isn't he? Mm. He, they, they're not the same team without him. Um, they've got the guy from Cypress Hill in to replace him when he's not, when indeed he's not playing. They've got the Cypress Hill bloke, um, but he's he's just not the same type of player, is he? He's, he's not bad, but he, he's not good enough uh, to replace Wilfred Indeedy. So um, that's a yeah, that's an issue. But I mean, look at Jamie Vardy. He's he's like Peter Pan, isn't he? He just keeps going on and on and on and on. So yeah. you can't you can't be good at scoring got... penalties this season anyway. I'll give him that. Well, yeah, he's he hasn't scored a normal goal as he this season. I think all his goals have been penalties. Yeah, yeah, I know, but he still keeps knocking them in, doesn't he? No, so... no, he does. He's, he's a good player. Let, let's let's be honest. He is a good player. So, I mean, I, I think there's actually some. I know the Premier League um, this season has produced some crazy scores and some great games actually, and. This weekend, there's some great games lined up as well, isn't there? I mean, obviously, you know, th- those ones we've mentioned, obviously our game as well. You know, there's some big games this weekend, actually. It's going to be interesting to see 
some of these results actually to see where it leads yeah. everyone because it has been so open and unpredictable the, the whole league hasn't it so um it'll be very interesting to see i think by the end of this weekend i think it's going to be um we'll have maybe a little bit more of an idea how liverpool have bounced back you know how man city have bounced back you know obviously how we do against man city as well and you know it's going to be a good weekend a big weekend i think for well we uh, need uh, everton liverpool to be a draw really don't we i mean that'd be ideal i mean if we can if we can if we can grab a win just about nick a win i mean it's saying a lot because we don't we haven't done it for so long, but if we can, if we can nab a win and we get a, and Everton Liverpool get a draw, that'd be that'd be brilliant, really good. It's not about how the other teams go. You missed out Tottenham; they've been in an amazing run quite. Well, they're losing six nil. They're losing six nil, so that's all. Fine. I forgot about that. Sorry, yeah, forgot. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's a shame they, that happened, but yeah, they lose six nil every week. I mean, the test thinks Son deserves golden boot. I'm not quite sure. I agree with that. How can an Arsenal fan actually come out with that? Seriously. I mean, he's a good player, but we we don't think he deserves to win anything because he no, doesn't play. deserve to lick it. He is a good player. He's a great player, but he doesn't deserve player. anything. But exactly, he deserves misery. For oh, I just, when he well, smiles, and he's like, when he smiles, I just want to punch him in the face. I can't stand <laughs> his face. But he's a great. Yeah. He's a really. I mean, you can't knock him. He's a great. Great oh, player, but yeah, he, is um, a great player, yeah. he doesn't deserve anything. No, I mean, uh, you know, he, he's got a lot of goals this season, but I refuse to put him in my fantasy team. I refuse to put any Spurs player in my fantasy team. I don't care how many goals they score, how I many points no, they get. Never. I'd rather, I'd rather get no points than get Son's points because I'd feel dirty, quite honestly. I don't even buy white toothbrushes or you know, <laughs> white and blue toothbrushes, let alone put any Spurs players in my fantasy team. No, no, no. chance. I, I used to live in America and I got offered to be a cowboy. Good money, but they wanted me to wear some spurs, so I didn't bother. Yeah, well, no, exactly. Exactly. Some things are more important, aren't they? Exactly, Definitely. yeah. <laughs> You've got to have your standards. You've got to have standards. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but Jonathan here thinks he's a bit of a streaky player. Here you go, weeks about scoring. Um, I don't know. I, I do feel his goal scoring record is actually pretty decent. Yeah, if you're right. He has group, got a decent yeah. goal scoring record, yeah. but. He's definitely all turds on the pitch in, in the middle of the Armitage Shanks Arena, swirling around all the all the little turds swirling round and round and round on the way down the plug hole. <laughs> I agree. D, DWTT thinks we've we've spoken about him too too long. And he's yeah, I agree. I agree. Correct. Six nil. Correct. Yeah, six nil. Six nil. Six nil to West Ham. That's that done. Six nil. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is there anything else that we want to talk about? I know we sort of would leave the last bit perhaps open to you guys if there's anything in particular. I know we've, we've covered quite a lot of good stuff tonight, actually, um, across all of football as well as Arsenal. Is there anything that's kind of, you know, you guys want to maybe talk about or anyone maybe in, in the in the but chat just, maybe got anything? The Kieran Tierney thing, right? Uh, I saw someone tweet about it. I know we touched on it earlier, but someone tweeted out uh, what... Mikel Arteta said about it and he said hopefully we'll hear more this afternoon yeah I, so that, yeah. I, I don't know whether anyone in the chat has, ever, has heard anything since <laughs> um, but I, I think right, that yeah. if he has um, tested negative the, the club will pull out all the stops to get him playing basically well, there's no I, reason I he shouldn't is it let's face it if he's, no, if he's negative the, why on earth can't he play it's, it's, he can't it's just ridiculous. They, they haven't got a leg to stand on stopping him from no. playing, as far as I'm concerned. Who's no. actually stopping him? Is it Scotland? Yeah. He's yeah. not in Scotland anymore. Because Scotland, it... Scotland's regulations are different to ours, aren't they? So I, I think that's probably why initially they said he had to self-isolate for 14 days because he'd been in close contact with someone who tested positive. But if he's testing negative, I can't see what difference, you know, why, how they can he's justify He's now, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's back now. I think he's back at. I'm... So they were all back. So um, we'll see um, how long till international breaks are postponed. Yeah, I mean, perhaps they should be with the current situation. I know Arteta was asked about that today, and he he says it's important international football goes ahead with the tournaments and stuff. But um, I think at this moment in time, it's crazy, isn't it? When other countries have got different regulations, and if if Kieran Tierney can't play on on Saturday for us. Because even though he's tested negative because of a Scotland player that he happened to have some contact with a week or so ago, that would be a ridiculous situation when he's tested negative, wouldn't it? 
And that's simply a result of international football that wasn't necessary to be played at this point of, of time, I think. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It, it does seem crazy that... I, th- I, don't think, well, I think they should be postponed permanently. I don't like... Uh, I haven't liked international football since, uh, like I said, Terry Venables and Glenn Hoddle were manager. Uh, since then... It just went. It just went off a cliff, as far as I was concerned. England team. No, no. Last, I, I, last I the last World Cup, everyone was going mad about us getting to the semi-finals. We were so lucky. It's unbelievable. Yeah, we the were draw lucky. we had. We might as well have been, you know, doing the the Euro uh, European Championship qualifiers. It was that easy. Uh, Southgate. Well, a, well, don't get me started. It's absolutely shit. It always has been. Sorry, yeah. my language. No, but, no, uh, no he, totally he's agree. never totally. been a decent coach, as far as I'm concerned. I just can't believe he's in the position that he's in. And I bet he can't either. I bet he goes home. Well, he was lucky. I'm still the England manager. I'm still the England manager. He, he was only it. there by default, wasn't he? Because he was the under-21 manager. Exactly. And it's yeah. like, who can we pass this to? And he was standing I mean, in the AD, corner. What is going on at the FA? A.D. Boothroyd is the under-21 manager as well. And he's, I mean, he is absolute garbage. He, he hasn't yeah. got a clue either. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know what the FA are doing. But I seriously don't. Well, I'll listen, they might have to change him. Get they might have to change him. England manager. I'm, no, they should I'm, change him. I don't mind that, but they should get... Southgate should go. He should go to Man United. Well, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be uh, good. That, that would we'll be good. Get Eddie Boothroyd in as a Spurs manager. That'd be, that'd be a good a good uh, thing, that. So, Man United lose their next four games. Well, he gets sacked, and they, they take Southgate. There you go. Yeah, oh, that'd that's be it. Hilarious. Job I'll, done. I'll, I'll, yeah, that's, that's a I'd great, that's a great scenario, that, isn't it? Happy that'd days, that. That'd be great. That'd be really good. But so they're not going to get rid of him. Um, the, the test thinks Lacazette will be our top scorer this season, but then he also wants Son to win the Golden Boot, so I don't think we should listen to the too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, well, it's got to be a Bamiang our goal. Mind yeah, you, yeah. even be. if Martinelli comes back just after Christmas or I think he'll come back before because the kid's a machine he could make he, he could just go on a scoring streak to the rest of the season and win us the league he's, he's that good if if he can get a, get a, back, a run back in the team yeah mm, I, mean, I mean I'm obviously I'm it's so exciting now I'm Martinelli year, but I, oh, I cannot wait for him player. to come back into the team I mean, he's, he's going to be like a, a starved greyhound you know, they're starving the greyhound for two days before the greyhound race. He's going to come out of the blocks like that. He's yeah. just, I cannot yeah. wait. I, so, yeah. I hope yeah. he gets he, protected, though. He wasn't protected before he when he played last time. They were out to get one of the those, other players last time. You know, like the muzzles, like the Rottweilers have. He won't have one of those on when he comes back onto the pitch. <laughs> they throw bits of food at him, will they? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I agree with Jonathan there about obviously going back to the Kieran Tierney thing, you know, the, the Portuguese players seem to be OK. Um, obviously, Ronaldo tested positive, didn't he? Um, I don't quite know how, how coronavirus got to him because uh, he's an absolute uh, physical uh, sort of specimen. Yeah, he's not far off uh, me, really. He's six-pack. It's not bad, is it? No, he's, he's definitely up there. You can't, you can't yeah. knock him for that. Mm. I've got um, beer as well at home, six packs. So we're all together in the same squad. <laughs> I've, I've got a barrel. <laughs> I think I think Sam's referring to Lacazette. There, will dry up after Christmas. Um, but hopefully, Martinelli will be back then, as we said. So if he does, Martinelli can um, can come come in and uh, hopefully get us the goals that uh, that we need. Uh, so I think we've decided that Southgate's a very, very crap manager, which is good. No, he's a good manager. Good manager, Man United. Yeah, good no, he's, manager. he's good for Man United. He'd be good for Man United. He'd, yeah. he'd even be yeah. good for Tottenham when uh, when they get a sick of Jose, actually. He'd be quite a good yeah. choice for them as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, other than that, we don't really um, think too much of him. Um, he always misses a few chances. I suppose that's Lacazette again. I think yeah, that, I mean, um, I, I think oh, oh, Batman is going to be top scorer, isn't he? Let's face it. Unless he gets an injury and he misses a large chunk of the season, he's going to be up there to win the Golden Boot again, isn't he? He's going to be up there. So, um, I think uh, Lacazette's going to be phased out throughout the season. I, I, it's his last season. For Inketia, do you, for Inketia, do you think? Do you think Inket no, is going to get no, more? I, no, I genuinely think enough, that Aubameyang is going to be moved more into the middle uh, as, as, as more and more as the season goes on. 
Genuinely I mean, what, do. What, what, what I find strange about Nketiah, actually, I know, I know Melvin's not a big fan. Um, when he plays for England under-21s, don't I you think him. he looks a lot more cooler in front of goal? That goal he scored yesterday to beat the... Terrific. Record. That first touch, Richard, was brilliant. That yeah. first touch. And the way he took the goal, and he's done that for England-21s a few times. And it's like, I've yeah. never seen him do that for Arsenal yet, really. No. No. All his goals for Arsenal have been two-yard tappings, haven't they, most of them. And he, he doesn't seem to have that, you know, that was almost like a, a Thierry Henry type goal, wasn't it? The way he, he took the ball, yeah, ran on, it was, and it, it, was, it, was a, it was an incredible goal. And he's done that for them a lot. And I've not seen him do it for Arsenal. And I don't know why, because I think he's got it in him. I do. Having watched him play yeah. quite a lot for England lately, he's got that in him. But I don't know why he's not producing that for Arsenal. You know, maybe it's a different role he's got in the team, perhaps a little bit. I don't know. But you just don't do see him do because, that. Uh, do you think he might be overawed by a couple of the players like Aubameyang and people like that? They're not doing it to him purposely. It just happens he's looking at them and going, well, perhaps I'm not at their level yet. And in the back yeah, of his maybe. mind. Yeah, maybe he feels not more hungry under 21s amongst his own kind of... He, he feels that he's, he's as he's good as him, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. maybe. It could, it could be that. I don't know. But I, I'd be... want to see him start doing that for Arsenal, you know, because I've been so impressed with him for England. He's looked, He has looked a great player. And you think to yourself... You know, if he can come into the Arsenal team and play like that, then we've got a great player there who's going to be a big asset to us, you know, because if you can get a player who can score goals like that regularly, then... And he's got mean, a good attitude, moment, hasn't he? Right? He, a very good he should attitude. be, for the next yeah. season or two, and I think he'll be happy with this, to be perfectly honest, c- considering how old um, Aubameyang and, if we do keep Lacazette, how old they are he would stay on for the next couple of years and he'd be quite happy to be our super sub at like, a, you know, be our Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, if you want, um, when he was a player. I honestly think it'd be yeah. it's stupid to get rid of him because he's an Arsenal man through and through. He's a great finisher. He can really mess teams up with the, if he comes on with 20 minutes to go and we're chasing the game. He works really hard. And... Um, <laughs> How much would you have to pay for uh, to get a backup striker in? Someone that's happy to play second fiddle to Aubameyang and Lacazette and Pepe and Martinelli and all that. He mm. he's perfect for us because he's he's a proven goal scorer who's happy to be in and around the first team at the moment and get his minutes whenever he can. Give him all the cup games and mm. and bring him on in most of the Premier League games. Um, to to rest Aubameyang's legs because we need to start looking after Aubameyang as, as, as in this last contract that he's got because he, he cannot simply carry on going you know chasing back and and playing at left back to cover uh, all mm-hmm. you know, all game he's just doing too much running so if, I think I genuinely think Lacazette's going to be phased out throughout the season we'll sell him next summer and. Aubameyang is going to shift into the middle to save his legs long term and extend his career. I mean, I think Martin says that he thinks he can get 15 league goals. He'd have to play a lot of games to get 15 league goals. I can't see him playing that many games, actually, to be able to be in a position to score that, that many goals. He'd, he'd probably have to play most of the league games, wouldn't he? I, I would have thought to score that, that number. Um, when you think, I mean, Aubameyang only scored 22 league goals last year, playing in most of the games. So I think for Eddie, Eddie to score 15 in the league, he'd have to play 35 games, wouldn't he? Probably, and I don't think he's going to play that that no, many. No, I, I think it, I don't think it'd take that take that much. I don't, honestly, I, I really rate Eddie. I've been going on about Eddie for for ages now. At least probably in, uh, last not last season, the season before. He because since uh, Ian Wright started talking about him a lot more and took him under his wing and became his protege, and. Um, I started what because I started watching a lot of the uh, the under twenty three games, and uh, this is why I, I'm not going to mention his name, but you know a certain youngster who's got three initials <laughs> that I love very much. But I I've got I really do rate Enketia as a striker, uh, but we don't play to his strengths. This is the problem. I, 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 yeah, I've got, no, da- I've got yeah. no doubt that he would make it if we if we did play to his strengths and got balls into him because he's devastating in the box. He's an yeah. actual born finisher. Um, but whether he'll make it long term, I don't know. Because, uh, you know, we, we don't play that sort of style of football. But we would be absolutely stupid to get rid of him, when, like I said, and, and go and buy a replacement for him. Because who is going to come and be ha- happy to play second fiddle? If I was Eddie, and I, I'm pretty sure about this, that he'd be quite happy to, to spend the next two seasons playing the cup games in Europe, you know, Europa League. If... Um, 
uh, you know, Champions League obviously next season because that's where we're going to be. But um, and coming on in the Premier League as a as a super sub, like I said, um, because he knows that Aubameyang's not getting any younger. So, and fingers crossed, he will really imp- uh, prove himself over the next season or two, and he he might be able to take over from Aubameyang long term. Who knows? But in the meantime, yeah, we'd be stupid yeah. to get rid of him because we know he can score goals and we know he's an Arsenal boy through and through. I mean, I, no, I, think, I, think he's on, I think he's on the verge of a breakthrough, a big, a major breakthrough. You can see he's he's almost there and it's just, is he going to be able to take that next step now, which is what he needs? And I think a lot of that's going to do with how much game time he gets. Maybe the Europa League is going to be the making of him this year, perhaps, and he'll go on, get a few goals there, um, get more chances in, in the Premier League. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I like Eddie and I think he's got something there. It just hasn't quite flourished yet, has it? And whether it's like you said, Andrew, maybe it's because he's not playing... We're not playing to his strengths, maybe always in, in the system that we play. He's having to drop a bit deeper um, and stuff he's, like that. I don't know whether that's why. He's in and out of the team as well. He's in and well, out yeah, he's in and out of the team. So, it, you know. It... I mean, Bell- Belligan already. I mean, Eddie's well, got Eddie, yeah. ahead of him. Belligan's never played a first team game, has he? So, no, of course not yet. Yeah, awesome. but I mean, you know, maybe Balogun deserves an opportunity in the Europa League, maybe. I don't know if he's in the squad. I don't know if he was well, I'd the love squad. to keep hold of Balogun, don't get me wrong. I think he's a, a he's an extremely a great, a good prospect. He's um he's the same build as... Uh, it really reminds me of um, Sean Wright Phillips, the way he runs and, and the way he looks. He's got exactly the same body type as Sean Wright Phillips. But yeah, I think he's... A, I don't think he's going to stop, though, is he? He's... he's He's going to be gone. Uh, he's not signing yeah. a new contract. I, I so, again, yeah, you don't give him the... I would love to keep hold of him, but uh, we can't keep hold of everyone. But the no, thing is with Eddie as well, the thing is with Eddie, if he does start getting minutes and plays all the cup games and, and, and coming on as scoring, I mean, who's to say that someone might not come in and offer us 30, 35 million for him? Because, yeah. Yeah. you know, <laughs> how much did Liverpool get for... Uh, what's his name? Um... Uh, 23 million from Sheffield United and he's never he's he's played zero Premier League games Brewster, yeah. so Brewster. I mean if he's worth 23 million yeah, Brewster, Eddie, yeah. Eddie is worth 35 in anyone's any day of the week so and if he does and oh, he, yeah, he can get yeah. to become a first choice for a, a Premier League team good luck to him but I, I do like Eddie I hope we keep him and I hope he, he does make a good career at Arsenal no, I'd like to see it. Yeah, I'll say I think he's on the verge. I think this is going to be a big season for him. I think if he doesn't quite make it this season with Arsenal in terms of getting a regular game and scoring enough goals, then I don't know whether or not he ever will. Because, you know, he's, he's 20 now. He's going to be obviously 21 next next year. And if he's not playing a bit more regularly by then, you've got a question if he ever will. Um, so I think this is a massive year for him. And I, I'm, I'm hoping that he comes good because I... You can see he's got he has got something about him. He is a goal scorer. He's a natural goal scorer, and um, I just want to see him produce more consistently for Arsenal when he when he plays. And that's difficult when you're in and out of the team, I suppose. Uh, and that's a backup. Yeah. You can't get much better than him, really. No, no, he's, he's a great backup. He's a great Someone sub to have Someone that's happy to be back up playing for Arsenal. I wouldn't say he's happy. Hard to find, up. isn't it? I'm sure he wants to play. I'm sure he wants to start every game. Of course, I'm, I'm of sure course. Yeah, I'm just. But as a club, you know, like yeah. I said, if we had to go out and replace him, who, who would you get to replace him? You'd have to play, you know, people aren't going to want to come and sit on the bench, are they? Um, they're going to want right. to start every single game. So who are we going to get that's better than Eddie and Ketia to come and, and play in his in the same role that he's playing for us? It's going to be the, hard to the... do and uh, not cheap either. So we'd be stupid to get rid of him, keep him as long as we can. If he does yeah. demand to go, then fair play to him. But hopefully he will uh, keep putting his value up and up and up because it's not doing him any uh, disservice, is it? What he's doing for the England under twenty ones at the moment, you know, it's, that's a yeah. fantastic performance uh, that he's done yeah. for them. And it, it's not just him. I mean, that, Sorry, no, his scoring him. record is incredible. Yeah, you know, very so good. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, not just players play like him. There's lots of players we've got in the reserves that are all coming through now. They look potential, mm. but mm. there could be a situation. But in the next five years, we don't actually have to spend too much money. And that's no, a big plus exactly. for the club. You know, we've got we've got a couple of players in most positions now. And you've got all these youngsters coming through. You've got the Smith Row we haven't mentioned tonight. I know we mentioned it the other night. But here's someone I'm quite interested about. I think he could be quite good. 
You know what I mean? He could be the guy to stop us spending 50 million on think, OR or something like that. Oh, funny, oh, it's funny you say that, Mike, Melvin. You know, <laughs> don't get Andrew you Slater on Smith Row or like, we'll be all night again. He could <laughs> save us. He, he could save I'm us 50 or 60 minute. million quid going to buy OR. Play him instead. He might be just as good, if not better. God, you know, we, you know, that's it. That's all I'm saying this evening. Don't all worry. right, fair enough. Um, I think there seems to be, um, I mean, Mark there said, isn't Eddie 21? Nitesha said he's 21. I'm sure I, I was, I'm doing a, I did a bit of a video on him yesterday. I'm sure he was born in 1999. So he would be 21, wouldn't he? Actually. Yeah. yeah. Depending so on when he was born in 99. Yeah. I think he's May. I think his birthday is May. But yeah, so I think he is 21 then. Yeah. So I think Mark's right. Um, so yeah, even more so. And I think this, this proves what a big year this is then. Because like you said, if next year, if he's going to be 22 next year, if he, if he isn't making regular appearances, then you, you've got a question if he ever will. So I think it's an even bigger season for him. I mean, another young player actually I just wanted to talk about quickly was William Saliba. Because Arteta said today that he's not going to go out on loan now. And that he's that? Be, that. He said that in his press conference. Now, whether that's because they couldn't get a deal sorted out. But to me, if he stays at Arsenal... And Arteta has clearly said he's not ready to play in the first team. Does that mean he's just going to play in the under-23s? Surely he'd be better off going on loan and getting experience of first-team football somewhere rather than playing in our under-23s, surely, to me. That's what no, I No, because his problem is in his head at the moment, isn't he? He's, he's, it's not physically, it's not because of his talent. He's, he, I'm sure he's short in a couple of areas, you know, experience and talent-wise, of course, because he's, he's, because of his age. But at the, prop, the problem with him at the moment is he's, he's, he's in his head. I, don't know, mm. I think the worst thing yeah, you could do yeah. is put him into the, the championship in a 48-game season. You know how tough the championship is. He'll get kicked from pillar to post. And the, the only reason we were going to send him back to France was because of his family being over there. So he could actually go and be closer to his family at this difficult time for him. I mean, imagine, it's, it's, it's really tough for the kid moving to a new country oh, where no, he oh, don't speak the yeah, language. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 18 no. years yeah. old, and he's obviously lost his... Uh, a family member, it's it's a horrible time for him. So I think the only reason we would have loaned him was to go back to France so he could be closer to him. But now, the best place for him is to stay within the club if he's not going to go on loan to back to France, which is obviously impossible now, unless we do that in, in January. Potentially we could do it in January. But in the meantime, if we keep him close to home, keep him learning the Arteta way of playing football and coaching him ourselves then maybe he, he will be able to get his head right. It'll be enough time for him to get sorted. And then potentially we can play him later, uh, second half of the season. And Because uh, we can change the Europa League squad after the group stage. Yeah, that's right. We can, yeah, and, after the group uh, stage, yeah. We could, because he counts as homegrown as well, we haven't got to name him as part of the specific squad. So it, maybe we can sort of uh, start introducing him to the Premier League late, uh, second half of the season. We don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I just thought that he he would benefit from playing football because he's not played a lot of football, like Arteta said, didn't he? He didn't play much last season because the, obviously the French season finished in March and he'd had an injury and whatever. Um, so I just felt as though he might be better off playing playing more regular competitive football as but opposed if it's, to... if his brain's not right, if, he's, if his mind's not really focused because of what's yeah, going on yeah, in his life at the moment and, yeah, and you chuck yeah, him into the championship and he fails... Because he's not quite on it mentally. I think it, it could ruin his been, career. Yeah, he's eighteen yeah. or nineteen years old, whatever he is. He's a young kid. We can afford to write off a year to get him right. I, I think so. It's it, it's more important thing sometimes, isn't there? Yeah. You know, and we're not mm. going to lose money on that kid. Yeah. Whatever no, no. happens. Whatever no, I happens. I want to talk about money. Right. I want to see him play. I want I know. him to play. I think I, he could I, be I there for years. What I was going to make. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to come good. We know that. He's in yeah. for the long haul. Um, but if the worst case scenario is, and he, he just wanted to move back to France because of his life situation or whatever, we still won't lose money on him. So just pers just give him some time and space to get his head right. I think that's the main thing. Um, I think it's yeah, the most important maybe. thing at, at the moment. Maybe, but yeah. To, ch yeah. to chuck him into the championship, the hurly burly championship, with his mind not on it, I think it could ruin his career if it's if it goes wrong. It, yeah, his confidence yeah, could maybe. be shot to pieces, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe it's, it's the right thing. I mean, I, I suppose um, we don't really know exactly what goes on behind the scenes. We, our, our tech will know more about his personal circumstances and how he is 
physically and mentally as well, maybe. And perhaps that's the reason. I don't know. I just found it, um, you know, because obviously there was massive talk of him going out on loan last week, wasn't there? It was a big, almost as though it had, it had almost been which clubs he going to, as opposed to if he was going out at all. And now suddenly it seems as though he's not going out on loan. Now they've, they've changed their mind and we're keeping him at the club. Um, I just thought, I didn't really know, you know, it's, it just seemed to me a little bit of a, a strange sort of backtrack, really, when it seemed so obvious last week that he was going somewhere. It's- and it's also we positive because remember we, yeah, we took, and, and Arsene Wenger has said about Jack Wilshire maybe it was a mistake to start playing him so often so young and I, I think it's a positive that we're actually looking after the welfare of the younger players coming through a bit more and he, introducing them slower mm. which yeah. we clearly are now we're introducing them slower into the team and that's we can afford to without squad now can't yeah, we Andrew we can it, afford it, to it's good could do that a year ago such yeah. a positive such yeah, a I think so. Because it would Definitely. extend their careers. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm quite happy about that. So, yeah, uh, the fact true. that we're looking after the kids' welfare and uh, it's really important because he, he could be our defensive rock for the next decade quite comfortably, you know, or mm. more yeah. uh, at his age. So, yeah, the, looking after him now will see us right in the long run. Yes, I hope so, yeah. I mean, uh, like you said, the, the long term is is more important. And like Melvin said before, he's still a young lad, isn't he? We've got plenty of years left in his career and we you know, we can benefit from that for a long time yet. So, yeah, if, if it's the right thing, that'd be brilliant. I mean, let's hope that's the reason then um, that we are keeping him for those, those reasons to look after him and make sure that he's right. Um, and you never know, he might he might even end up getting some game time, mightn't he, with us in, in the Europa yeah. League or... Or might be like yeah. I think the Europa League could be a good uh, way to maybe get him some games. Maybe you know we'll see yeah. how that works. That could work pretty well for him because I think he's in the squad, isn't he? Like you said, he hasn't because he's a uh, technically homegrown as such. Um, I mean, he Martin, can't play. He, yeah. he can't play in the group stage of oh, the Europa though, Mark, because uh, he's not named in the squad for the Europa League. Um, but he can play in the Carabao and uh, the FA Cup and stuff like that, um, and. Premier yeah, League, yeah. but he won't he won't do for quite a while yet. But, no, no, um, I, can't, I can't see him playing in the Premier League. I actually thought the Europa League would have been ideal for him, actually, but if he's not named in the squad yeah, for that. If he's bearing, if, like I say, if his mind's not there at the moment, his mind's not there, we just give him some space and time and uh, let him let the club sort it out. You know, they're, they're doing the right thing by him, which is the most important yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 no, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they are, and I've, I've, I trust what they're doing. I just found it a little bit uh, of a shock, really, today when Arteta said he wasn't going anywhere. When last week it was all a matter that he was, and suddenly he's not. So I just thought it was a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit strange. But uh, anyway, um, yeah, exactly. Jonathan's there. He's right. Isn't he? Look how Maguire's Absolutely, coping. He's yeah. had a tough summer, you know. Yeah, uh, really, sometimes... really positive. Uh, you know, long term. That I mean, how good would that be? It'd be incredible, wouldn't it? You know, and they could be the centre back pairing for France as well uh, for the next decade, as well as Arsenal. So yeah. could be brilliant. Could be really, really good. Yeah. Listen, if, this, if he came, if he came through the reserves and um, Saliba, and he's eighteen or nineteen, and, and the team says, you know what, we're going to play him in the under twenty threes this year. We don't think he's ready for the first team. We wouldn't bat an eyelid. No, so because we bought not. him, so I don't think it's a big problem. I really the, don't. The, the under twenty threes is a good, good, good level for an eighteen, nineteen year old. To be perfectly and honest, he'll learn about the Arsenal as well. The Arsenal, exactly. Way. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, exactly. I think it's yeah. okay. I really think it's I do. okay. I do. We've actually got some yeah. good centre backs yeah. in the under twenty threes. Well, we've gone on like that. McGuinness. Um, Mac like. something. Who's that Mac guy? McGuinness. This guy. Yeah, him. Six, six he's got on loan, isn't he? Colossal. Yeah. Six foot four. Bloke. That's right. Yeah. At, I mean, yeah. That header he scored against MK Dons. Is Terrific quality, header. Isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Really good. And um, yeah, we've got a couple of others as well. So both um, have got. Haven't they both centre halves gone on loan? I think. Yeah. yeah, I know um, McGuinness. Has got to Ipswich, isn't he? McGuinness, I think. Yeah, <sighs> the other kid's name. I've completely forgotten his dad, the other one's name. But yeah, they both have. But and Zach Midley's gone out on loan as well. Yeah. Um, by yeah, all yeah. accounts, the the last I heard was a few weeks ago that he's coming on in leaps and bounds. Zach Midley, and uh, we've got high hopes for him. Now he's been developed very very slowly, but he, he's he's had a few shots at first team, hasn't he? But apparently. Hmm. He's coming really starting to come good, and he's massive as well. He, 
He's good on the ball. Very, very good on the ball. Yeah, yeah. 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 Centre-back as well, isn't he? So, another one. Yeah, <laughs> so we're looking quite good at there. Because we haven't brought through defenders since Ashley Cole, really, into the first oh. team, have we? No, no. I've got a question for you both. Will we well, see Maori play this year? I, th- I, th- I think he's going to play more than you think in the back. Three. Really? Yeah, yeah. I do, honestly. I think. Yeah. I must admit, I- I'm starting to think that he's, uh, Arteta's playing so with Gabriel in the centre and Maori on the left. Mm, I do as well. Yeah, I, mean, it I, could think, be. Yeah. I think that's the second half of the season when Maori's fit and maybe David Luiz is coming to the end of his contract at the end of the season, I think we could see Maori, Gabriel um, as playing as in those two positions. There. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe Rob Holding on I the right. Chambers. Chambers, I or think. maybe Chambers if when he gets himself fit, yeah, yeah, possibly. I think, but yeah, I can see Murray playing. Yeah, I, I can see Gabriel. I think Arteta sees Gabriel more in the centre, doesn't he? Because he, he, yeah, he's played him playing him there. Even when he he could have played him on the left in the last game, for example, he, he didn't, did he? In fact, he no. played him on the right, didn't he, in the last game? That's right. Um, yeah. So I, I can see, yeah, I, I can see Murray getting to play. He needs to get himself fit, obviously, and he's still got a. I think he's still got to prove himself in the Premier League. Yeah, he's not played enough, has he? But I think that's what'll happen. Uh, Mark's asked the big question that everyone's asking: Do we think Party will start against City? We, we did sort I of tap at the beginning. I do personally. I, I, I think I'd, 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 I'd love to see it. it. I, he may not. I don't think he will. But I'd love to see it. Obviously, I, 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 I honestly think he will. I, I think he will actually. I, I, I don't think I don't think you buy a player you've been after for so long who's fit. And you don't play him straight away in a, in a he game. He played like two he, games for Ghana, didn't he? Um, yeah, he's fit. He's clearly match so. fit, isn't he? He was playing for Atletico before. He's clearly match fit, isn't he? I, I don't think you'd buy a player like that who's that important not to play him straight away, not to throw him straight in. I mean, Man City bought that defender, didn't they, the other week? Put him straight in the team in their first game that they had a few days later. And I, I, I'll be surprised. I, the only reason why he won't play is if Arteta doesn't feel as though he quite understands the role he wants him to play. But... I think he's an intelligent player, and I think he can. He yeah. can do it. So I, I, I'll be I'll be amazed if he doesn't start. Put it that way. But I, I say with Arteta, you can never know what he's thinking, can you? But listening to the press conference today, I, the impression I got was that he is intending him to start. He didn't want to come out and say it because he doesn't want to give his team away yet, does he? Um, no. But I personally think he will. I'd be quite surprised if he doesn't actually. So Sam. To to that, to, Sam. You know, I love you, mate. I'm really glad you're watching, but that comment is really disappointing me. It's stupid. Thanks. I don't I don't like that comment at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really... Not good. I, I think it's about that anyway, is it? I mean, we, we have got to look after all our players in the best way that we can. And, you know, some of them need different things, don't they, I suppose, at different times. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, we'll maybe... Uh, brush over that a little bit maybe yeah um, no I'm doing a show on Sunday about um, mental health uh, with with chappers uh, because it's you know not you know I haven't uh, sort of hidden the fact that I've been struggling for quite quite some time and um, I uh, yeah so if anyone that's watching or listening back to this or watching it back wants to sort of get involved with it on Sunday evening uh, then please do because it's a, a thing that's close to my heart and mm. I think it's got, if I can just, I know it's a really cheesy line to say, but honestly, if I can just help one person, I'll be quite happy with that because uh, there's, a, there's a lot I've been through and uh, I think it's a horrible, horrible, debilitating condition, uh, which I, uh, I'm desperate to get over and uh, hope I will one day. Um, but it's just, it, it's, yeah, you can't make fun of things like that. You can't. It's just not a nice thing to do. We don't know. We're 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 only sort of uh, guessing that that's the situation with him. But when you, you you're his age, and you, you have lost a parent, but you've also been suddenly your world's turned upside down. You've moved to a different country where you can't even speak the language, and you've got no uh, close friends and family around you. Then it's going to be really tough. So um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, it, but we he is homegrown because we registered him. Uh, sorry, at the end of this season, he'd be classed as homegrown. You're right because we registered him at the big, uh, when we signed him before we sent him off on on loan back to uh, Saint Etienne, um, Saliba. So we, that was clever. We we registered him as our player before, so we uh, got a bit of a, a season head start on him being homegrown. Yeah, so I mean, as um um. It was it that just I saw a comment. It was Dave actually, wasn't it? Who said 
uh, it won't be till next year because, like you said, we've got a that's year right. now. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. I've got that wrong, yeah, but it, that, yeah, we uh, got the end of this season, then he will be classed as homegrown. You're right, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so Mark, f- f- he's got a sneaky feeling that it might be Sabios S- and Zeka in the middle, but um, I'll say I, I think Partey will start actually, and I hope he does because. I'm excited about seeing what he can bring to the team. And, you know, after the way Gabriel started his Arsenal career, let's hope that Thomas Partey can have a similar influence on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, I don't see any reason why he can't. I mean, I'd say I'm really excited about him. And I say, I just can't, I don't think you buy a player like that and they're fit and ready to go and not play him. I mean, he's already said he's, he, he's fit and wants to play. So to me, mm. you've got to play him, haven't you? It'd be crazy not to, but I'll tell you so he him. will be so motivated in that first game against Man City. Yeah, of course he will. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, it, 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 the thing is, he's he course he's match fit because he's just played twice for Garner. So, yeah. I, w- I would definitely... Um, Plus as well, he's a little bit of an, he'll be a little bit of an unknown quantity to Man City because they won't exactly. really know exactly. how he's yeah. going to fit into the team and what role he's going to play. When he's played two or three games, everyone will think, oh, that's what party does. But at the moment, it's almost like, yeah, everyone knows what he can do, but... They don't know what he can do for Arsenal because he's never played for us before. So, in a way, it's a massive advantage for him to play for that reason because it's an unknown quantity in a sense. And that's going to go in our favour as well. And I think Arteta will use everything he can possibly use to, to to get the result that we need on Saturday. And, you know, I say I think he'll start, but I say he, he, you can never read Arteta's mind, can you? So, no, no, that, I've never that's exactly the team he's picked once, never got close to it. No, it's exactly I'm, I'm why. Right yet, no. It's exactly why I would shock. Man City and and play a four three three and really go at them because I, that's the last thing they'll be expecting us to do. Um, all the big teams we've played, we've played you know the three at the back, three mm. four three, and um, they will be expecting that all week, and that's what they'll be training for. So that's why I'm I've got a sneaky suspicion that we might just be a bit more attacking than we think um, this weekend. But I hope I'm like, right, but. We'll see. We'll see. I think that Partey, apart from all his other attributes, I mean, he looks fantastic. I think he could be the spark that gets Pepe playing. Yeah, I do. I really do. Very much so. Very much so. Because he... he, Giving the ball quickly to his feet or just in front of him and let him run onto it. I think he will will draw the midfielders out, Partey, and make spaces for Pepe. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and Mark, I wouldn't drop out either of them. I would have Xhaka, Ceballos and Partey in midfield, personally. Um, but if, I, think that'll if... Be the, I think that'll be the evolution of the midfield. I'm not sure whether we'll go straight into that now, having not played it in any of the previous games I know, well, for, I know. Time, for a month now. And I'm just hope, I'm being hopeful. With really. the system. And I, I, think if he's gonna, I think he'll play Xhaka and Partey as a partnership, personally. See, see, I, see I, I disagree. I think he'll be Ceballos and Partey because the last two games, uh, Xhaka... Didn't start one, and he came on as a sub on the other one, didn't he? Or got subbed? Can't remember now. Oh, he, he got su- he got subbed off in one game, didn't he? Um, and he, and didn't then, pl- he didn't play the one before. He had a Carabao Cup game. He didn't play, did he? But that's no, because it was that... a Carabao Cup. So, but he, he didn't play in the Carabao Cup. But he still got booked. <laughs> <laughs> that's how late your tackle was. Yeah, yeah. But he, I, I, got, I think that it'll be surprised some party. I think we'll be surprised. I'd like to see that, but I'm not sure that yeah, I, that's what that, I would say. Be so, I mean, I said this ages ago, didn't I? I, I you must remember. I said the Ceballos and Partey would be absolutely lovely as a partnership because they're, they're complement, they'll complement each other so well and they're both press resistant, great on the ball, great sort of in tight spaces as well. Mm. Um, I think it would be a perfect partnership if we're going to go down that route and, and play a double pivot. Personally, that's what I think anyway. They, they complement each other so well. I mean, Jonathan Zay said about El Nenny possibly playing a right of the back three. I mean, he's played there before. About him. I forgot about him completely when we're doing yeah, that. Yeah, I must admit, that's a good point because he's he's played in, in the in the centre of defence before, hasn't he, yeah. El Nenny? Um, yeah. And yeah, that, that's a possibility. Again, you see, that, that would be something that you could see yeah. Arteta throwing in something like that, couldn't you? As a, as a surprise, because he tends but, to do it so, sometimes. So yeah, that's a good point, actually, from Jonathan there, because I hadn't really thought yeah. about that yeah, either. Yeah, it's a good it's a good shout, but you can't forget Chambers, though, as well. And the he's, fact not fit, that he he's, he's not fit to play yet. He's back in full training. Um, yeah, it's not going to be long. No, 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 I'm not talking about this weekend. Oh, but right, yeah, yeah, when yeah. It, but, but don't forget, he was being played every week 
under Arteta in every game before yeah. he got injured. I, know, I, know, I think was a very, back. very short span of time, I know. But he was the first one, you know, in the back four. And he, he was playing very, very well, don't forget, wasn't he? And I in think a bad team, age, he was our best defender. Yeah, he was excellent. He was excellent. And I think in the back... Right back as well, he played well, didn't he, as a right back. He, remember that cross he did on the volley? Um, he, he got two or three assists in one game. I can't remember yeah. who it was against now. And he and he crossed it in on the volley, and it was it, standard the age, wasn't it? Was it standard the age in the in the? Um, it might have league? been, yeah, yeah. Or unless it was Nottingham Forest, it was one of those cup games. But it was right, brilliant. Actually, yeah, it might have been Nottingham Forest, yeah. Yeah, uh, but he he was playing ever so well. Uh, but I think because of his youth and his his size, he's good on the ball. I think he's a, he's an Arteta player mm. um, in the in the right of a back three. So yeah, I, I think yeah. we it, once he is properly match fit, I think we're going to start seeing quite a lot more of him. Yeah, I, be, I mean, I think Holding's on on sort of shaky ground, isn't he? Because I don't think he's been playing particularly well, and he's probably the weak. He's been the weak link, hasn't he? So I think when Chambers is fit and ready to play, I, I can definitely see him coming in for Holding, definitely, um, because I, I feel as though Holding, I say, is, is hasn't quite um, been up to the standards I think that the others have been in no, in the yeah. defensive area. Certainly this season, even towards the end of last season, I thought the same actually. I stand by the fact that he's a really good defender and he's starting to get his old form back now. But in the system we're playing, it, it just doesn't suit him at all. If he no. went to somewhere like um, Southampton or some a, a club, you know, that ilk, I think he'd be great, you know, in the middle of a back four. Um, yeah. But he just doesn't suit the style that we've been playing lately. And I don't think he will, no. unfortunately. No. But I really I like him. And I, yeah. I, I will always stand by the fact that I, I do like him as, as, as a really good defender, but n- not for us, unfortunately. And I hate saying that. I really do. No, no I agree. I, I agree, yeah. I think that the system isn't isn't the right system for him. And that's why I think he's looked so shaky because he he's, he just finds it difficult to play in that in that role. And I think Callum Chambers will probably find that a lot do, yeah. more yeah. easier for him. So, yeah, I can see that definitely happening. I'll say not for, not for a few weeks yet because I don't think he's... He's quite ready, Chambers, to play. And we've yeah. got some tough games. I don't think you'll, you'll throw him straight back into them. He might play the Europa League games, maybe one or two of them mm. coming up, possibly, to I'm, get him... I'm glad, though, to... that, that Holdings had a chance to come back into the team, have a, bit, have a run yeah. of games, and start getting his form back and showing people that he's actually a good defender, you know. But he, because he, he is. He is a good defender. Um, but, yeah, he's just not, not the right fit. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I honestly totally think agree. that Chambers will will definitely play a big role in the team. I really do. Yeah, no, I can see that. As long as he can get uh, some some players who have an injury like that. I mean, obviously, Holding had a bad injury. Bellerin did as well, and it, it took them a long time. In fact, like we said, Holding maybe hasn't quite even got mm. back to his best yet, and Bellerin's only just really starting to, isn't he? So you know, maybe Chambers is going to take a long time to to get anywhere near the sort of form he was showing. Obviously, before the injury, when he, he was, yeah, he might take him a long gonna, time yet. You know, we don't he know. Might do, we're... yeah, but it, you're only going to get there by playing, aren't you? So he's going to, yeah, yeah. Be, I don't know. Maybe, maybe give him 45 minutes for a few games, um, or half an hour at least, and just sort of ease him back in that way. But I'd rather yeah. have him it back. I mean, no one. I mean, I respect him completely, and I like the guy, but Mustafi. He has done ever so well under Arteta, but I don't want to. I'm sorry, but I will never change my mind. I, I would rather have Chambers than Mustafi long term because he can't. I just physically cannot trust the guy because I know that at some point he will have a fantastic game and then he will yeah. just do that one thing where we think, oh God, you know, you haven't got to look at the screen. You hear a groan and you know what's happened um, if he's on the pitch and. I just can't yeah. get over that, unfortunately. But, but I do respect the guy massively, the way he's overcome all the hate and uh, the way he came back into form and he played some great games. And he's he's got so many good qualities. Um, but I, I still I still just don't... I mean, that Spurs game at the end of last season, it was just... Oh, he had amazing. a 20-minute spell, didn't he? Oh, oh honestly. He just lost it completely, he, didn't he? One oh, stage, completely, he just, completely. One stage, he threw himself head first with his arms on, down by his side and tackled someone with his head uh, in that Spurs game. I'm sure it's a Spurs game. I just think... What it was. He, he, went, he just lost man? it. He lost it. I mean, it, it, was, it was a shame because... 
I mean, funny enough, that Spurs game, um, I remember at the time thinking that he played a lot of football and he, I think he was maybe just fatigued. And then the very next game was a semi-final against Man City when he got injured. It was a muscle injury. So maybe it just caught up with him the number of games that he had, perhaps. But he was playing well before that, wasn't he? And, you know, I agree with Dave too. I, I, I think Arteta does like him and I think Arteta does respect him. And I can see Mustafi getting some games, certainly in the Europa League to start with. And, you know, he might even come back in the, into the Premier League team at some point. I do feel that's a, at the moment in time, that's, that's our final position to really nail down, isn't it? That right-sided centre-back out of the yeah, three. I... One position so far. I mean, you can see Gabriel, he played there, didn't he? Maybe Gabriel, and then if Tierney's fit, you could play Tierney on the left or Mari. So maybe we could compensate that way. But at the moment, that seems to be the position where we're a little bit um, uh, slightly, that's our weak. A weak little link at the minute, I think, perhaps, if, if we've got I just, one. I would so much rather, I really would, I would so much rather have Chambers there than Mustafi. I just think it, although Chambers isn't, uh, you know, incredible world class, I, I still trust him more than Mustafi. Um, but I, I know that um, Arteta likes Mustafi, but I also know that it, uh, Arteta <laughs> likes Chambers because don't forget they were teammates before as well, Chambers and. Uh, Arteta, weren't they? Um, yeah, I, I yeah. like Mark team, but he, he seems to like Sabaya so much he's put him in twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one Sabaya, one Sabaya is good, but two Sabaya is even better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it seems Arteta like the pros and cons, even if hmm. the cons of stuff is well. Yeah, I think that's a little bit harsh, maybe. Uh, Long term, I'm not convinced Bellerin and Cedric are the answer. Well, no, maybe not long term. I, I think, to be fair to Bellerin, I do think he's come back well from his injury in oh, this great. season. I think he's been playing well, um, and I think he's getting mm. back towards his best. I'm not saying he's quite there yet. I still think he's, he's got a little more to do, but I do think he's coming back to his best, Bellerin. And, he's definitely um, improving, I do. no doubt about yeah. it. He, he's, he's, he's on his way back, I think. I think he's, he's had a difficult time with his injury, and I think he's had a difficult time getting back. I think he lost a little bit of pace and he's had to adapt his game slightly, but I do feel as though he's definitely on the way back and I, I, I'll definitely give Bellerin a little bit more time because I do feel as though he's, um, he's he's doing a good job at the minute and I want to see him continue to progress. Cedric, I don't think we've seen enough of him yet, actually. I'd like to see him play a bit I mean, more. I don't get the hate for Cedric. I just do not get no, it. I don't get the hate for him. I, just don't I think, think he's, he's decent. Better. I think he's decent. I do. I do. And yeah. again, going back to the like Nketiah point I made earlier, who are you going to get in that's better than Cedric as a right as, as a backup right back? A, an international player who's won the Euros with alongside Cristiano Ronaldo on the right hand side. Yeah. We paid a million quid for him, and a, a sixty grand a week he's on. And what what's the problem? You know, I don't get the fact that there's an issue there. Even if we were to sell him, we're going to get money back on him. <laughs> you know, we we could sell him in January or we could sell him in the summer, and we will make money. For Cedric because he's a good player. Yeah, he's a good backup. Good player, yeah. He's a very good backup. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't see the really issue backup. with. Yeah. Only I really Cedric. don't see what the hate is for Cedric. Cedric. No, no, he's, he gets I stiff don't all think the he's time. Me, but I, I, I like what I've seen of him. Certainly, I think he's, he's, I think, he's he can do a, he can do a job when he's needed. Definitely, and I, I, I've got no problem with him. I just don't I, feel as though he's, he's played quite enough yet. So we just have to exactly. Give what I'm not saying is you know no one no one is saying he should start, and no one thinks he's ever going to be a first choice. But I think as a second choice backup, I, I can't see the hmm. issue. Personally, I, yeah. think no, I, 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 I agree. Yeah, I, I don't see. I think he's a he's a decent enough squad player, and he's certainly done okay when he's played. He's just not played enough. I mean, yeah, Mark said there he meant, he meant Jacker instead of the two Sabiosis. So one Sabios, <laughs> one Jacker. I'd rather two Sabiosis than Jacker in. <laughs> I, I weren't having a go at you, Jonathan Porter, for the comment either. It was just something. You know, I think uh, you know loads of different podcasts that are really just keep going on and on about the Cedric signing as if it was the worst thing we've ever done. And I, I don't get it personally. So, no, yeah. no, I, I think he needs he, he needs he needs more more time before we can actually judge exactly how good or not he is. But so far, what he's done, he's done okay, hasn't he? He's been a decent enough player. I don't have any issues with him. He's just he's not played enough, really. So we'll see mm. how that might develop. But I tell you, certainly with, with Bellerin, I, I I definitely would want Bellerin to get more time uh, and yeah. to keep keep um, improving because I think he has done. I think he's played well this season actually so far, and I want to see that 
that carry on because I, you know, I think he's he's been a good player for Arsenal over the years, hasn't he? He's a loyal player as well, and you know, he's, get, he's sh- certainly showing signs of getting back to his, his yeah, absolute best. Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. No, no, he, he definitely is. Um, don't feel like them to be better defensively the fullbacks. <laughs> the assault for Alonso, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, when uh, Chelsea, yeah, goal, yeah, yeah goal that goal that Alonso scored. Yeah, I know. Yeah, mm, but yeah, of course. But it's I think it's it his injury that I think the the most recent injury that he's he's maybe still struggling a little bit with. But I say I think he's getting back. And I the, the fullbacks just aren't defensive anymore, are they? I mean, uh, no, uh, they're basically uh, wingers, now, aren't they? They're basically taking on the position of a winger. They have just got to do a little bit more tracking back than maybe wingers used to traditionally. I mean, Terence Trent Derby is horrendous defensively. I think he is. Yeah. He, He's one of the best uh, crossers of the ball there is, and uh, he's incredible as an attacking player. But defensively, he's he's very ropey. Um, yeah, no, no, I've always, I've always said that. I think defensively, you can get at him. Mm. Um, yeah, but definitely. yeah, going forward, he's brilliant, isn't he? His delivery is fantastic, and that's what fullbacks yeah. are now. That's, that's a modern fullback, isn't it? You know, yeah. and that's what. I mean, you look at Saka, that's why Saka's quite good when he plays as a left wing back because he's good going forward, he's got a good mm. delivery. But he's also actually, I think he's a good defender as well. He, he yeah, can yeah, defend as well. Uh, and Tierney's kind of got it all as well, hasn't he? Tierney's a good defender and he's also got the quality going forward as well, hasn't he? So, you know, Absolutely. Uh, that's why he'd be a massive miss on Saturday if he, if he can't play. Um, mm. But I, I still think he will actually. I, I think that will get sorted, and I think he'll be able to play. I think they'll they'll do a test on him probably tomorrow. As long as he tests negative, I think he'll be fine to play. I, I, I think you, you can't stop him. I don't think. I really don't think you can. He, he doesn't fall under the, the Scottish juris, jurisdiction anymore. So, what was I've told a rumor. I've heard a rumor that they will allow him to play Scotland if they get independent from the UK. <laughs> they hold, they're holding him with a bag over his head yeah. and they're going to put a video yeah. out soon if we get him yeah. independence you said Sturgeon he can play on Saturday don't know how true it is no I think that's a good deal I'll, I'll vote for it I'll take it yeah, yeah I'll just yeah. get rid of him yeah that, that, that Nicola Sturgeon is it yeah I cannot stand that woman just get rid of her just get, let her get what she wants and just tell her to fuck off <laughs> yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, though, she seems to be having too much influence on us at the minute. In, I know, in, 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 and it's like, what, why are we listening to her? Seriously, I mean, I've got sure nothing I against the Scottish more. people. Just her, by the way. I just no, no, I, 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 I'm with you. I just, I think she's influencing too much of what's going on in this country when it's not relevant. You know, Scotland's a different country to us. They've got different issues to worry about. Um, and yeah, fair enough. She can do what she wants to with her country. That's fine. But we shouldn't be listening to what she's doing and taking it on board that we have to follow suit. You know, that, that, she, shut all, she shut all the pubs and now we want to shut all our pubs. It's like, come on. You know, she, I mean, seriously, just, she needs to, I mean, she's going on and on and on and on about another referendum for Brexit and all that sort of stuff. Just oh, she's doing my head in. I mean, I, yeah. I, I, she's, I've, I've muted all those words and uh, on Twitter and everything. So I don't get any, you know. You gotta get it on my timeline anymore. You just what have I started? Like a broken record about actually. her. What have I started? Yeah, you, 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 you've opened, no. you've, uh, you've poked Sorry, the bear there. Sorry, oh, you've horrendous, woman, listening. horrendous woman. She, she no, ain't happy. I guess she's moaning about like something. <laughs> moan, moan, moan. But as long as she allows Kieran Tinney to play, we'll, we'll, um, we'll like her. It's exactly. She's got, She'd she's be my favourite. Nothing to do with her. Yeah. And I think Jonathan's got a good point there. She's power hungry. I think that's quite clear. But I don't think she's the only one, unfortunately. No, that's, that's power hungry. But anyway, that's that's probably another show for another time, and we can debate that. Oh, I won't be. Sure. I won't be part of that one. Don't even me on that one. <laughs> I'll just go. I'll just, just go on a twelve-hour rant. Yeah, no, we'll, I'll, I'll probably will as well. So we'd have to uh, we'd have to make a whole day of it, probably. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do it for charity. Do the longest yeah, maybe, podcast maybe, of all time. Maybe, maybe do a do a charity. Yeah, that'd be a good. One, the yeah. longest podcast of all time. Um, Twenty four yeah. hour show, just going on about uh, the whole rant, current situation in the world. Um, I'd be up for that. Actually, I'd be quite up for that. To be perfect, I honest. probably would actually. Yeah. yeah, it would go quite quick as well, wouldn't it? In actual it fact, would, yeah. Mm. Just, just have a little break every now and again for something to eat and a cup of tea and that, and be fine. Or just the, the tag tag team rage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Quite, I quite enjoy that. Yeah, Mel Mel with his stick, with his stick just poking everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he'd, been a, he'd been a coach. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just, to, to hire 
to you know to keep going into higher higher performance. I could do that. a good three or four hours on a Neil Smith road, couldn't I? You probably could actually. Yeah, that would yeah. be quite good. That'd be that's a show on its own, isn't it? Yeah. And Andrew talks at Emil Smith Road. There you go. That's that's a yeah, four hour show there, right there and then. <laughs> Richard, I'm prepared to do a marathon as long as you pre- give me the Horlicks to drink after eight o'clock, mate. All right. Yeah, no, 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 after a few yeah. hours, Cho- the chocolatey Horlicks are. Oh, that's a that's top. Oh, I've never had that. Is it any good? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Never had that. Chocolate Horlicks. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, there you go. We're all sorted now. Then Melbourne will be happy with his chocolate Horlicks, and we're away. Oh, yeah, that sounds nice. That could be a deal breaker. That can lovely. Mm. Yeah, there definitely. Go, yeah. If you haven't got any uh, in the cupboard, put just put one spoonful of of hot chocolate in your Horlicks and mix mix it up. That's just as good. All right. There you go. You see, we get you get all kinds of things on this show. You get you get tips about it. Cookery. Tips. all tips. Yeah, cookery. We're all, we're having a cookery hour soon, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we cover everything on here. Don't worry about that. It's not just it's not just football. We talk about oh, tonight. We cook cheese on toast. We cover all the important issues in the world as well. Yeah. So everything gets covered. So make make sure you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss out on none of this. The important things we'll in the to world. Get five hundred subscribers. I'll I'll show everyone how to make the perfect omelette. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Emil Smith Road. The other way around, isn't it? Actually. Yeah, I, I'm, his, uh, I'm, his, I'm trying to get the gig as his new agent because I'll, I'll, I'll get him into Barcelona, I would. I'll, yeah, well, I'm sure you would. Yeah, I would. And uh, Dave says, uh, um, <laughs> yeah, he'll be injured again by the time we finish talking about it. Well, the time uh, I think we're talking about Emil. I've covered that last week. I, I covered that, didn't I? There's no issue there. No issue. <laughs> No, no, definitely not. I think I don't think we should uh, we should pursue any more Smith Row um, talk. I mean, I think that should be it for now. I mean, I say we've covered pretty much everything, and we've covered stuff we didn't even need to cover, which was good, interesting, uh, interesting stuff. Um, just obviously, thanks for you guys for for joining me, and of course, Mike as well, who had to shoot off a bit earlier to do another show. Um, Melvin, where can people find you on social media and stuff like that? I'm basically mainly on Twitter on Melbourne. The only way is Arsenal Marks. I'm on Facebook, but don't use it as much as Twitter. Okay, fantastic. And obviously, Andrew, yourself, what about your, your obviously, you've got your channel as well, haven't you? Yeah, after after subscribing to, to this great channel, please go over to mine and give mine a subscribe as well and like a few videos. Um, got some good stuff on there. Uh, I'm going to start doing up some more Mesa Island Discs soon as well, which is quite exciting. I do enjoy that show. That's great, um, that show. Yeah. Seriously, that's brilliant. From yeah. Dahl Square to Where is good. YouTube channel and um, at From Dahl Square on Twitter. And thank you very much, Melvin. Yeah, it's a good, it's a really good show, if I say so it myself. Good. I really enjoyed that. And yeah. um, I get, got some couple more people lined up for it. So, yeah, it's really, really good. Good, excellent. Thank, um, thank you for having me on again. I really enjoy it. Yeah, thank, no, it's, it's thank good you, I, I love chatting to you too, guys. I say Mike as well, um, who obviously was was here earlier. Mm-hmm. Check, check out his channel as well because he's got some good stuff. Um, he does some great um, uh, stuff on the game as well, doesn't he? The reports afterwards and stuff like that as well. Which is, yeah, uh, really good. Which are really good. So definitely um, check that out as well. Obviously, thanks to everyone in the chat as well. There's been some uh, some great stuff on there, particularly early on as well. We had our Man City fan Michael on as well, which was good, and a few other people as well. Which uh, some yeah, new people it started, it started to be all right after uh, you know I was a bit sarky to him. I think he's uh, come back and he was all right then in the end, wouldn't he? No, I was going to say about Arsene Wenger, which is good. Uh, I say we've had a few of the usual people in, haven't we? Like Mark and Detesh and Sam. To be fair, and... I really like it when we've got fans of other clubs uh, joining in. I yeah. Think, I think it's great. I do. I really I really encourage it. It is, it is good. I mean, you know, before the West Ham game a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to get a West Ham fan to come on, um, but I couldn't get one to come on, actually. So um, it'd be something I might look at as the season goes on to try and get the team we're playing next to get maybe one of their fans to come on. Um so we'll see if we can do that. I mean, I've had a Leeds fan who was on earlier um, who said he'd be quite happy to come on. So maybe when we play Leeds, and maybe get him on and we mm. can have a bit of a chat about, about Leeds as well, which would be good because obviously uh, they've had a great start to the season, haven't they? They're the only uh, team I'm actually fearing coming up against, if I'm honest, more so than Liverpool and Man City. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say saying... yeah, I, I, I fear just... them, but I, I, it, I, I love them. Be a good... A good, uh, be a good test for us the way that they play. And, and DW, yeah, cheers, and Andrew, is good. Um, Thank you very much, and, mate. 
And Jonathan also recommends the, the Mesa Island Disc Show as well, which uh, it is a good show. So everyone needs to get on to that. I say thanks to, to Dave Thank as well you. for Thank watching. Um, and I say to everybody else in the chat as well. It's been it's been great. It's been a great show again tonight. So thanks to everyone who's watched um, on. I say it was on Facebook for the first time as well. So we did get a few new people watching from there. Um, I'll be putting it on Facebook regularly now, um, which will, which will be good. Um, I say thanks for you guys for for joining me, and I say to to Mike as well. Who unfortunately, had to had to shoot off to do his own thing as well. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Please give the video the the thumbs up as well. I've got some great stuff coming up. I'll be covering the Man City game on Saturday as well. Um, you know, some stuff at half time and full time, and I'll do a full review on Saturday as well. And Monday evening as well, I've got a former Arsenal player joining nice, me. Just mute, yeah. just mute yourself for future reference when you blow your nose, Melvin. Melvin needs to self-isolate now for the next three months. No, no, it makes me feel a bit sick. Mind you, I was listening... Oh, my God, I was listening to... I'm not going to mention the name of it. It's not very fair, but... Oh, I was listening to this one podcast, and this, you know when you like got a greenie in your throat and you go through your nose and you make that horrible noise? You go, like that. Yeah. He did it live on the in the middle of his show, and he, like he, you just he, did. You could, like, you could hear him not. Ch- <laughs> no, I didn't. No, he did it. You just uh, did it, and it You could hear him chewing it. It's like, oh, sorry, oh shut up. up. <laughs> and then oh, that, I, I swear on my life. And oh, then the no, next, the, no the interest. very no next, interest. No interest. the very next episode, I, I thought I'll give him another try, and he did it again. And I just like, oh my god, that is just so dis. I made me feel physically oh. sick. And I can hear it now. And I'll just like, yeah. I've, never, I've blocked it. I've blocked everything. Any photographs, have you? I'm never going to listen to that podcast ever again because it just put me off for life. Oh, okay. no, well, um, it's, it's, not, it's not the best recommendation, I have to be honest. No, no. it's horrible. Absolutely so horrible. this is why people need to watch our channel because we don't we don't entertain all that kind of carry on, do we, here? Oh, no. We might it's sneeze dangerous. once in a while, but, you know. No, but that's, sneezing's fine. Apparently sneezing's safe anyway. It's not sneezing we have to worry about, so you're fine. Ah, we don't need to self isolate because you sneeze, so we're all right. I don't think you can catch it virtually anyway. So. <laughs> I think you probably can. Some of the stuff you hear, you can probably catch it from. Yeah, they're probably. Nicola Sturgeon probably thinks you can. You, so. Yeah, probably, yeah. So, also, as well, I do recommend this book for everybody, the Arsenal Wenger book. Definitely get it and read it because it's going to be. I'm on chapter four, just starting chapter four. Hopefully, I'll finish it by the weekend and I'll let everyone know. Um, how good it is, but I've enjoyed it so far. I definitely get it because it's great, and Arsenal think is great, and we all love him really. Even yeah. though some people don't want to admit that they do, because it would be backtracking on the last ten years. Respect, of come on, big respect. Exactly. exactly. Where's the statue? Come on, Arsenal. I mean, seriously, yeah, come on. We need one. They, we do need a statue, don't we? So I, I think you should have a statue of him and um, George Graham standing next to each other. Yeah, maybe. I mean, yeah. I, I, I certainly feel Arsene Wenger deserves a statue just for the influence he's had on on the club. Um, and oh, and DWTT is asking you, Melbourne, if you're on YouTube, but you're not. Yeah, he's on you? our channels all no, the time. I haven't got my own DWTT. channel. DWTT. No, he's he's no, on our sorry. channels all the time. As guests, aren't you, Melv? I'm guest. I'm yeah. the I'm the uh, super sub. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you're the, the podcast <laughs> whore. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't need your own channel if you keep appearing on everyone else's, do you? I suppose that's. Uh... <laughs> Exactly, but, uh, yeah. We do all the right. work. Melvin gets all the credit. Yes, yeah, right. Exactly. And he gets people asking him if he's, if he's got a channel, you see. That's what happens. You can just say, just, fan base just, without even having just, a channel. Just quickly before we sign off, just, just one more quick mention about the show coming up on Sunday because it's quite important to me. If we can get as many people watching and joining in as possible, I'd be really grateful. Um, it's going to be like a, a show. I know if. On mental health on on Sunday evening at eight o'clock, mean chappers. But anyone else is welcome to join in. Anyone wants to come on and just uh, discuss any points at all about it. Don't be shy. Come on, uh, it does help. And just drop me a DM and we can get it organised. But as, if you don't want to come on, just still come on and, and support the show and and give it a watch. It's uh, be really grateful. I'm yeah. going to be doing like a, a tweet about it soon. And if you can, yeah, we'll put those straight re- on. Once it goes on, there, Andrew. We're Retweet it, on, it right? around to everyone watching, yeah, listening. We'll That'd be that. great. I'd really appreciate it because I'd like to get a good audience for that. And uh, I think it's a really important subject close to my heart. No, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I'll, I'll be quite happy to to come on, Andrew, actually, because, you know, I've got some sort of uh, experience of it as well, very welcome, like that, very which, which could be, um, you know, might help people as well. So I'll be definitely interested in getting involved with that great. as well. So, great. But we, can, we can speak that in the meantime anyway before Sunday. Um, definitely, yeah. 
but yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I say I'll, I'll retweet that as well. But yeah, it's definitely going to be something to worth getting involved, in. especially I think at this time as well of everything that's going on in the world. I think that mental health has almost been um, had to take a, a, a side sidestep really which is not really fair when you think about how much all this has impacted people's mental health over the last six seven it's, eight months this is the thing um, it, under, got, in this current climate with everything that's going on in the world it's it's worse than ever at the moment yeah and it people is, yeah. are suffering terribly and I, I, there was a horrendous story on twitter it just made me it actually nearly made me cry it, not long before i joined you i just got in this evening read it just before I came on, and I, I, it almost made me cry reading it. A terrible story about a, a mother of a, a three-year-old oh, little don't. boy, and oh, uh, no, it just no. made me so sad. And it, 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 everything that's going on at the moment, you do not know what's going on behind closed doors. It's no. horrendous, and uh, we need <sighs> to get this. We need to stop this stigma, and we need to start helping each other because yeah. it's so critical. So we need yeah. to get. We need, Definitely. please join in, everyone listening, watching, come and join us on Sunday evening and let's get this conversation really properly started out in the open and, and get rid of any kind of stigma and, and help each other out at the moment because it's, it's really yeah. important. Definitely, definitely is. Well, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I, may not, I may not come on, but I'll definitely be watching. Thank you. I might come on, I don't know. But yeah, no, I'll, I'll definitely come on because I say I've, I've got experience of it myself, so... Um, so I, I'm totally on your side with that. And I know how important it is. And I know how difficult it is to to get help with it, really, because, you know, it is a stigma, isn't there, still? Unfortunately, it shouldn't be, but there is. And, um, you know, it's, it is something that needs to change. And the only way it will change is if we have the conversation about it, really. And that's what needs to happen. And people need to understand that there's, there's a lot of people out there in the same situation. And you're not alone. And that there's a lot of us out there that, um, you know, if, and if we... If you share your, your your issues with with other people, it, it does help. That's the way it's always worked, isn't it? That's how group therapies always worked, and it does. You know, I've I've been in it plenty of times, so I understand how it works, and um, it well, is it's massively important. I say, especially at this time, at the moment, the way things are, and the way things are looking for the next few months as well, it's going to be really important that we don't suffer alone. Anyone, you know, and that you you do reach out to people because um, this is the time when it's more important than ever. I think. Well, the Arsenal community always come good as well. The Arsenal community yeah. are, yeah. Uh, I can't say how much they've, you know, everyone helped me out just on Twitter. Uh, it mm. was really, it's actually really moving. I'm not just saying that. It was really moving the the, the swell of support that I got when I, uh, I sort of shared, you know, how I was feeling at that point on, on Twitter. And it was, it was amazing. So yeah. we really come together as a as a group of fans when needed. So it's uh, yeah, it, it, it's a great community, it really is. It is. And I, and I think all all football fans actually from from any any club. I think you know at the end of the day, everybody's human. Everybody goes through the same kind of things in their life. And I think when you're a football fan, whatever team you support, you have got a common bond, haven't you? I think you know. And you know, yes, we you know we have banter with other fans of other teams and this and the other. Of course, we do, but. Ultimately, we, we've got a lot of common ground, haven't we, between us all, you know, mm. and football. I think football has, has given me um, probably 90% of the people that I've ever known in my life have come from football, you know, not not just Arsenal, but from other clubs as well. Most most people that I know, I know them as a result of football, one thing or another, you know, and, and it is it is a great thing, really. And I think it's there's not many things that can do that and bring people together in the same way that football does. You know, you've only got to see when England do well in the World Cup, for example, and stuff like that, how people just come together, don't they? And that football does that, you know, and and it's maybe one thing that's Not helped me. Not Southgate, don't know. Well, yeah, apart from him, yeah, obviously. But, <laughs> but it, I, 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 you know, it's one thing that's helped me actually over the years, really, um, to get through a lot of sort of difficult times, you know, football's kind of helped me. And, you know, I suppose it's, um, it's, it's good in that way. But also it, Kind of causes a lot of uh, mental health issues as well <laughs> when you when you lose too many games. <laughs> Only if the bloody government cancel it again. No, well, exactly. Yeah, thing. that's the other thing yeah. as well. Yeah, but anyway, at the moment we're we're still in business. So, but no, definitely everybody get involved in that show on Sunday as well because that's going to be really important um, and it's a great thing as well. So, um, it's big. I'm sure that'll be a big help to a lot of people as well, which is which is what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? Mm. So, yeah, so make sure you, you do that as well. I mean, I've got some rather less important football stuff on this channel coming up um, at the, over the weekend and stuff. And I am speaking to a former Arsenal player on Monday night as well. Um, that'll be eight o'clock on this channel. I mean, that'll be oh, 
I can't wait to hear from Gus Caesar. I love this guy. <laughs> if only it was Gus Caesar. Um, <laughs> well, maybe one day I'll, I'll have to see if I can, uh, if I can check I, it I, down. I won't, I won't be happy until I get Gus Caesar on the show. Honestly. No, no, I'm, 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 I'm going to keep Gun. trying. I've actually, actually met Gun. Gun. Yeah, I, I did once. Yeah, you know, I met him. Probably yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I'd he like, ended I'd up like... in Scotland, lower leagues in Scotland. Yeah, right. he did yeah, Scotland. Right. yeah, I'll have to see if I can track him down and see if he'll come on because that'd be quite good. Um, yeah, definitely. But at the moment, it's, it's unfortunately it's not that season, but it's someone even better. So I'm looking forward to that on Monday. So um, right. loads of stuff going on. So please subscribe to the channel. I say please subscribe to Andrew's channel as well, um, and obviously you know check out Melvin on on Twitter, and I say Mike as well because. Uh, I know he disappeared a long time ago now, but uh, he does some great stuff as well, and he's definitely worth um, worth checking out. It's Mike McDonald. So, um, yeah. so I say thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks for all your comments. Thanks for you guys as well. Um, and uh, we'll see you all again um, very soon. And of course, um, we always finish the same way, don't we? So as always, come on, you gunners! Come on, you gunners! <laughs>